Tokyo, a bustling city in Japan, has seen some pretty wild ideas for massive construction projects over the years. These ideas may seem crazy, but there's a reason they keep popping up. Tokyo is located in a region prone to earthquakes. Powerful earthquake measuring 5.9 in magnitude. Many homes in Tokyo have lost power. Making it an unlikely place for such ambitious ventures. One such proposal was a hexagonal building that would be twice as tall as the Burj Khalifa, one of the world's tallest skyscrapers. Another was a 4,000-meter skyscraper designed to look like Mount Fuji. And there was even talk of a tower that would be a whole kilometer taller than Mount Everest. These projects are massive, to say the least. To understand why Tokyo keeps coming up with these outlandish ideas, we need to look at the city's unique situation. Tokyo's metropolitan area is the largest in the world, with more than 40 million people. This makes up a significant chunk of Japan's population. But why is this the case? It all comes down to Japan's geography. Over 80% of Japan's land is covered in thick forests and mountains, with Mount Fuji being the most famous one. Tokyo sits in a coastal area surrounded by these mountains, where most of the population is concentrated. After the events of 1945, Japan experienced a period of rapid population growth and economic success, often referred to as the Japanese economic miracle. Even though birth rates started to decline in the 1950s, the economy continued to grow, and more people flocked to urban areas like Tokyo in search of better jobs and living conditions. Tokyo's population has only recently started to dip, but it remains one of the most densely populated cities in the world. With limited space to expand horizontally, the only way to go is up. This vertical growth has led to the construction of more than 160 skyscrapers over 150 meters tall in Tokyo. The tallest tower in Tokyo, Tokyo Skytree. In Japan, there's a towering marvel called the Tokyo Skytree. It's not just any tower, it's a special one. This tower serves as both a telecommunications hub and an observation point. It stands super tall at 634 meters, which is about 2,080 feet. For many Tokyo residents, it's like the successor to the Tokyo Tower, which is 333 meters high and looks a lot like the Eiffel Tower in Paris. But there was a good reason to build this new tower. The Tokyo Tower's signals couldn't reach the whole city. So a group of six TV broadcasters along with a railway company decided to put up this new structure. They worked on it for about four years, and on May 22, 2012, they opened it up to the public. Now what's really cool about the Tokyo Skytree is that it offers two great spots to see the city from high up. The first one is 350 meters up, and it can hold up to 2,000 people. The second spot is even higher, at 450 meters, with room for 900 people. But here's the really impressive part. This tower is earthquake-proof. That's important because Japan is known for its earthquakes. They made it sturdy by using a strong central core made of reinforced concrete. It's like the tower's backbone, and it's attached to the outer structure. There's also a clever hydraulic system that acts like a shock absorber during earthquakes, making sure everything stays safe and steady. So the Tokyo Skytree is not just tall, it's also super smart and strong. Tokyo Skyline Tokyo Tower Let's talk about the Tokyo Tower, which is a big deal in Tokyo. It's not only the second tallest structure in the city, but it's also the mother of the Tokyo Skytree. Built in 1958, it stands tall at 333 meters, which is about 1,100 feet. Originally, the plan was to make it even taller than the Empire State Building in New York, which is 381 meters high. But that idea got scrapped. Instead, they brought in Tachu Naito, a famous architect who knew a lot about building tall structures. He designed the tower based on what the TV stations, who paid for the project, wanted. It was meant for television broadcasting and it's still used for that purpose today. People also visit it as a tourist attraction. When they built the tower, they made sure to be eco-friendly. About one-third of the steel used in its construction was recycled from old American tanks that were used in the Korean War. That's a great way to reuse materials and protect the environment. So the Tokyo Tower not only stands tall and proud in the Tokyo skyline, but it's also a symbol of smart design and environmental responsibility. Toronoman Hills, the third tallest building in Tokyo. In Tokyo, there's a really tall building called Tyrannomon Hills. It's not just any building, it's a skyscraper. This skyscraper was built by a big Japanese company called Mori Building, and they know a thing or two about construction. Tyrannomon Hills stands at a height of 255 and a half meters, which is about 838 feet. It's located in the Tyrannomon district of the city. What's interesting is that it's right next to Loop Road Number 2, 
which is a new freeway connecting the central parts of Shinbashi and Taranamon. But this skyscraper isn't alone. It's part of a whole hub of modern buildings. They started building this hub in 2014, and they're still working on it, with the Taranaman Hills Residential Tower set to finish in 2021. When all is said and done, this Taranaman Hills area will cover a massive 7.5 hectares, which is about 800,000 square meters. That's a lot of space. In this complex, you'll find offices, private residences, stores, and shopping centers. They've made sure that it's super convenient to get around, especially with the Tokyo subway and train systems close by. Mori Building's big goal here is to create a business center that's even more impressive than their famous Rapongi Hills complex. So, Taranamon Hills isn't just a skyscraper. It's part of a grand plan to make a thriving business and living area in Tokyo. Midtown Tower In Tokyo, you'll find a tall building called the Midtown Tower. It was finished back in 2007, but it's still one of the tallest buildings around. It reaches a height of 248 meters, which is about 813 feet. At the time it was built, it was the tallest skyscraper in the city until 2014. This impressive tower was designed by an American company called Skidmore, Owings & Merrill. They did a great job, and it opened its doors in March 2007. This building has a whopping 54 floors, and it's not just a place to live. Inside, you'll find all sorts of things like conference rooms, shops, art displays, medical centers, and even the famous Ritz-Carlton Hotel, known as one of the fanciest hotels in the world. So the Midtown Tower isn't just tall. It's a whole world of luxury and convenience. Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building Number 1 In Tokyo, there's a really important building that belongs to the government. It's called the Tokyo Metropolitan Government Building. And it's not just any building. It's the headquarters of the city's government. This government doesn't just cover the 23 districts of Tokyo. It also manages the nearby cities, towns, and villages, making it one of the most significant governments in the world due to Tokyo's huge population. This building complex is made up of three parts, with the tallest one being number one. It's a tower with 48 floors where the city's government offices are located. They finished building this skyscraper in 1991, and at that time it was the tallest in the city until 2006 when the Midtown Tower came along. Constructing this important building required a massive investment of $1 billion, showing just how valuable it is. Even today it stands as a symbol of Tokyo's strength and prosperity. Thanks for watching the video, and if you found it informative, please like and subscribe to Blueprint Journeys for similar content. We look forward to sharing more knowledge with you in the future. Until then, take care.